The Lord is the strength of his people and the guardian of salvation for his anointed. Save your people, O Lord. Good evening and welcome to St. Aidan Parish. We extend a warm welcome to all who may be visiting our parish as we join in celebrating the twelfth Sunday of Ordinary Time in our national observance of Father's Day. In order to help preserve the dignity of our sacred worship, we ask that you please take this moment to switch your cell phones to the silent or vibrate mode. Our second collection this evening is in support of the charitable works of our parish, St. Vincent de Paul Society. We thank you for your generosity to this special collection, as well as your ongoing financial support of our beautiful parish. Now I invite you to please stand to greet our celebrant, Father Ivan Lovrich, being assisted by Deacon Jim Marr, our opening hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Welcome, my dear brothers and sisters, to our evening Mass, which we offer for Kathleen and James Marr Sr. And as we are beginning this Eucharist, let us ask our Lord for His grace and mercy, that He may forgive us our sins and prepare our hearts, that we may celebrate this beautiful sacrament of our salvation as we ought to aware that God himself is present among us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, and you my brothers, brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Take away the sins of the world. Have 
deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. a reading from the book of Job The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shut within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands. When I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door and said, Thus far shall you come, but no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stilled. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, his love is sea in ships, trading the deep waters. They saw the works of the Lord and his wonders in the abyss. Give thanks to the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, his love is up a storm wind which tossed its waves on high they mounted up to heaven they sank to the depths their hearts melted away in their plight give thanks to the Lord give thanks to the Lord his love is cry to the Lord in their distress. From their straits he rescued them. He hushed the storm to a gentle breeze, and the billows of the sea were stilled. Give thanks to the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, his 
that they were calmed and he brought them to their desired haven let them give thanks to the Lord for his kindness and his wondrous deeds to the children of men give thanks to the Lord give thanks to the Lord his love is A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A great prophet has risen in our midst. God has visited his people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. We are spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat, so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this who even the wind and the sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Pleasure being back and seeing you not only in person, but also seeing you without a mask in the church after so long time. It's a good thing. And hopefully something that we will continue to live on like this. Somebody asked me outside of the church, how was it back home? 
And I told them, not, not much different, because when I went back home, Croatia was something similar like us here, um, similar kind of a restrictions, similar, you know, practice of wearing the masks everywhere you go. But then I went back home to Bosnia, where my, you know, family is, and that was a really beautiful thing, because it was the world like before, nothing happened. So it was kind of a weird time travel, traveling into these different places and coming back home. And today's readings really have something beautiful of a, of a connection with what we have experienced in the last year and a half, last two years. It seems that the whole world, anywhere you go, has been buffeted, has been shaken pretty badly in some places, like here with us in the United States or some other countries even more so. Like, for example, I have a cousin in Germany who told me that the restrictions that they had were so stringent that when she wanted to go to a clothing store, she had to call ahead and make an appointment. So it seems that experience of so many of us has been that our life has really experienced a, a violent squall of events, like a little boat on a sea. People have lost the loved ones, sadly enough. People have lost their jobs. People have lost businesses. So many things have been different and have become different, and God knows when, if they will ever be the same. And to many of us, question has arisen, where was or where is God in all this? And today's gospel really beautifully portrays for us the experience of the God present in something of the events that took place in the world over the last year or so. We see that while he was on the sea with his disciples, similar thing happened. And a very literal thing happened that their lives were in danger. And they kept complaining, Lord, do you not care? He was sleeping. And yet as soon as they approach him, yet as soon as they offer prayers to him, as soon as they ask for help, he does not remain asleep. He stands up and quiets down the sea. It's interesting that from the early centuries, the Christian fathers have always used and seen this scene from the gospel that we have heard as a metaphor to understand the church and its existence in the world. That God is present yet somehow almost hidden to the point where he's sleeping seemingly while so many things happen around us, while the world as we know it is being shaken apart. While things happen both in and outside of our communities that distort them, change them, seemingly going against them, that we all wonder, where is he? Why is he not doing something? And yet, today's lesson and today's invitation from the gospel to us is really a beautiful one. It is an invitation to realize that in everything that is happening, God is present and with us. And that sometimes these events of our lives are truly meant to shake us so that we are forced to call for God, to seek after Him, as the disciples did in today's gospel. Now, this is one way to respond to it. However, there is also other ways to respond. People who abandon the boat, who skip the ship, so to say, who seek to save themselves, leaving and abandoning and you and I, who are present here today in the church, we hopefully belong to the group of people who, when they see what is going on, when they experience these turmoils in our lives, do not have the temptation to quit, to give up, or to skip the ship, or to change it. We are the ones who come to God. We want to discover His presence in us and among us, in our own lives, and in our own church, in our own parish, in our own time. And to those who seek Him, God will reveal Himself. And that is a beautiful thing about today's Sunday. That in the midst of everything happening to us, we do need to see this as an invitation to once again more deeply understand what the Gospel says at, a very big, at the very end in the form of a question. Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? St. Mark wants his listeners to raise up the same question in their own mind and heart. He wants us to wonder, who is he for us? He wants us to become aware even more so of his presence, his significance, his meaning for us. 
He wants us to be perplexed, troubled even, so that we can come up with the answer that will fully encapsulate how much He means to us, how willing we are to follow Him, how deeply we are willing to stick to Him in spite of everything that goes on. We have a beautiful promise or kind of a hint to discovery of God's true magnificence in the first reading. Even though it was a very short reading from the book of Job, it tells us in the conversation between God and his faithful servant, who is wondering where is God and what he is doing, God tells to him, who shut doors, who shut within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb? Who's the one who has the power over it, God is saying. And when we realize that this is the same God whom we profess and believe to be present in our lives, then everything that is happening around us in our society, our country, in our world, in our own families, with us, with our children, with our job security or insecurity, with every aspect of our life that has been tested now in this last year or so, we come to realize that fear should have no place among us. Instead, we should be like the second reading beautifully tells us in the words of St. Paul. We who know Christ, who have come to know Him, we should become because of that. And because we are convinced that He died for all of us, He died to save us, we should be exalted, inspired, strengthened, This is what should guide our lives. This is what should guide the remaining of our days. This is what should guide how we look at a future. With security. With a sense of hope. With the knowledge that the best days are not behind us, but are lying securely in front of us. Because this world belongs to God. Your life and mine belongs to God. The promise of what we are to inherit does not lie behind us. It lies in what is ahead of us. For if the world has come to an end, or if it is to come to an end, it would have ended. But God still has so much to achieve with you, with me, with our parish, with our church, with our lives, that He allows it to exist. He wishes it to be so. Of all the people in this world who question where God is, you and I as Catholics should provide a beautiful response. And this is an opportunity for us to invite God into the lives of our family members by showing them how we respond to everything that is going around us with a sense of a firm security and hope in the good days ahead because we know that they come from our faith in the Lord. And thus today's Gospel and the Sunday in the eve of the Father's Day becomes a beautiful invitation for us to place our faith in our Heavenly Father. Not to be, like Jesus says, those of little faith. Those who allow fear to shake them up. But to be a firm, steadfast, persevering people of faith who love one another, who in spite of everything continue to live as God teaches us, who place their trust in the Lord and who look as one another as a brother and sister in faith. So let us now stand and pray to our Lord, professing our faith in Him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake He was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us now offer our prayers. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our bishops, priests, and religious, that they will be good examples of faith in all of their thoughts, words, and actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessings and protection upon all of our uniformed men and women who serve both at home and abroad, we remember especially all of our first responders. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are called to vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, that they will respond with full and open hearts to their special calling, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those whose names have been placed on our altar and who will be included in our Father's Day Novena of Masses, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who presently carry the cross of suffering in mind, body, or spirit, that they may experience God's love in their daily lives. We pause to remember all those whose names appear in our Sunday bulletin, and in a special way, all who are suffering from the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our fathers and grandfathers, that as we observe Father's Day, God will bless them with good health and happiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Brendan O'Boyle, Josephine Cucciara, and all of our recently departed loved ones, that one day they will be raised to eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of Kathleen and James F. Marr Sr., for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us take a moment and offer our own petitions and needs. Heavenly Father, we present to you all of these needs and petitions, humbly asking that we may not receive only what we have prayed for, but also everything that we need in this life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory song this evening is Taste and See, number 688 for those with hymnals. and 
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of reconciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in his paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we now praise you as in joyful celebration we all acclaim. Holy, 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 sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time when he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And let us now pray with confidence in the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the King, and the power, and the glory, and the Lord, and Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of his peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but say a word, and my soul shall be healed. I shall walk round about his sanctuary, offering a sacrifice of jubilation. I will sing and recite a psalm to the Lord. A prayer of spiritual communion for those who are not with us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion song this evening is Draw Near, the body of number 649, Christ. the body of 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 Christ. Draw
just in case anybody still needs a Father's Day envelope to remember your beloved father, grandfather, uncle, whomever, they're still available at the rear of the church, and they will be included with those up here on the altar for the Father's Day Novena Masses. Once again, we would like to wish the class of 2021 our warmest congratulations and prayerful best wishes as you graduate and move on to future endeavors. In the world of education, it's truly been a remarkable, as some people would say, year. The class of 2021 will have very many memories different from further classes. Both Nanuet and Pearl River High School graduate this week. For all those who are our parishioners and their classmates, we wish them well. Next Sunday's second collection is to help defray the cost of our monthly parish finance assessment. And Monsignor Nevin has just received his letter from Cardinal Dolan, and he will share it with you with the following excerpt. With this letter, I have the honor to reappoint you as pastor of St. Aidan's here in Pearl River. So tomorrow or any time you see Monsignor, he's been re-upped. On behalf of our pastor, Father Yvonne and myself, and the entire parish staff, we would like to wish all of our fathers and grandfathers the most happy and blessed Father's Day. I thank you all for your generosity to the St. Vincent de Paul collection this weekend. Um, as I often, I've been kidding people the last couple of weeks, it's not just about food. Uh, we are asked to help supplement some medical bills, rent bills, O&R, you name it. We did it. But I can only do it with your uh, kind and considerate cooperation. The bags of food in the back goes without saying, we certainly need them on and on as we keep the pantry open for uh, 12 months out of the year. Rocky, I've used just about all the stuffed animals that you brought, thanks to the Toys of Tots drive. And it's amazing how if you just leave something out like a plush toy or doll, our families certainly uh, pick one up before they leave each, each time they visit the pantry. So on behalf of all of our client families, I wish to say thank you. When we were celebrating the Mother's Day, I didn't include a special blessing for moms. And after one of the masses, a lady came to me and said, Father, not only did we get any flowers, you didn't even get us a blessing. <laughs> Now, I know that not a single father is going to come after this Mass and say, well, Father, you didn't give us a special blessing. I do wish at least once that it happens that um, as the ladies are presented with the flowers, that a man, when they walk out of here, are presented with something like a cigar or whatever. I don't think that's going to happen, but uh, it's just a wish. In any case, as Deacon mentioned, I do wish all of you who are celebrating and all of you who are fathers and grandfathers, godfathers, a happy Father's Day. And I would like to uh, invite you to consider something. I know that most of you or most of us usually come to a specific Mass, be that 5.30 on Saturdays or, I don't know, 8 o'clock in the morning on uh, Sundays. But next Sunday, I would like you to consider coming to a different Mass. Next Sunday at 12 o'clock here in our church, during the Mass at 12 o'clock, we will be celebrating 25th anniversary of ordination of our deacon, Jim Marr. And you have heard in what he said, and he does it very often when he uh, mentions uh, St. Vincent Paul, the society, he thanks on be thank you all on behalf of all the families that for years he has been helping to serve here in the community with your help. I think that coming next Sunday to the 12 o'clock Mass uh, and changing maybe a little bit of our schedule to be here to kind of a, a, be a part of this beautiful festivity of our parish, this great jubilee of a silver jubilee of ordination of our deacon would be a beautiful thing to do. Not only as a way of us as a community to thank him for the 25 years of his ministry here at St. Aidan's, but also of all the gifts that on your behalf as an extension of your goodwill and your help he was able to achieve and offer to so many people who have come to count on the St. Aidan's Parish community. So I think it's a beautiful <clears throat> a reason for all of us to kind of a consider that next Sunday, 12 o'clock Mass and the occasion of the 25th anniversary 
of his ordination, we should be here for the, that Mass to give thanks to God and to thank Deacon for his ministry here with us. So let us now stand and pray. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Have a blessed Sunday and a good week. Thank you, Father. Our recessional hymn is Faith of Our Fathers, number 840. Faith of